So let's take a look at the unit circle. Okay, if you look at these four points, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1, remember in the unit circle, the cosine is the x coordinate, the sine is the y coordinate. So let's graph sine first. We're going to graph these points. So if we graph sine, y equals sine x, okay? So if we graph at 0 degrees, okay, sine is the y coordinate, that's 0. Okay, at 90 degrees, sine is 1. At 180 degrees, sine is back down to 0. At 270, sine is negative 1. And then over here at 360 degrees, we've made one revolution. We're back to zero. And that's how we get our, our sine graph. Okay, so there's one cycle, one period, and it keeps repeating. Okay, that's a sine wave. Now, if we want to graph cosine, we're going to look at the x coordinates. So at zero degrees, cosine is one. So it starts up here at the max. Then at 90 degrees, it goes to zero. Then at 180 degrees, it's down to negative one. 270, it's back to zero. And 360 degrees, you're back to one. So if you graph cosine, one period looks like that. So this is two pi. If you divide the period into four pieces, two pi divided by four is pi over two pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And it's the same thing for cosine. So that comes from the unit circle. Now, what happens if we want to graph y equals 2 sine of x? Okay, the 2 here, this is affecting the vertical stretch. This is the amplitude, this number here, right in front of the sine, okay? So what that means is we're going to go up now to positive 2, down to negative 2 and back to 0. So all we did is we stretched it. Okay, so this is the amplitude that affects the vertical stretch. Let's say if we go down to this graph for the cosine, say we want to graph y equals cosine of 2 times x, cosine of 2x. So what's happening here is this number here in front of the x, sometimes this, this is referred to as b, and you can use this formula, period equals 2 pi divided by b. So if you take 2 pi, the normal period for sine and cosine, divide it by this coefficient, the number in front of the x here, we will get 2 pi divided by 2, which equals pi. So what that means is this graph is actually going twice as fast. So if I was to graph this, graph this here, it would go like this. There is one cycle, and then another cycle. So you can see it actually completed two periods and the normal two pi, so it's twice as fast. Or you can think of it as completing one period right here in pi. Okay, so that's the basic idea for the amplitude and this b value, which affects the period through this formula here that you can use, two pi over b, to help uh, calculate your period. The next thing is shifting the graph left and right, up and down. So if we take a look at, let's say we were to go like this, y equals sine of x minus pi over two. Okay, so here, the number group with the x, that's gonna shift this graph in the x direction, this x-axis direction here, okay? Minus pi over two is gonna shift it positive pi over 2 to the right. If this was plus pi over 2, it shifted to the left pi over 2. So each of these points, I'm just going to be shifting to the right. This point here, uh, this point over here, this point over here, this point over here, and you can see now the graph shifting to the right, pi over 2. Now let's go down to this one at the bottom, cosine. Let's say we were to graph y equals cosine of x plus 1. So what does the 1 do? It's not group of the x, it's not in parentheses like this one. The plus 1 is actually just going to shift the entire graph up 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 
graph that's drawn in black, and I'm going to shift it up one unit. So I'm just going to go up one, up one, up one, up one, and up one, and there is my graph shifted up one unit. Okay, so those are the basic operations. Amplitude, this is a, called a phase shift, it shifts it left and right. You've got a vertical shift, this one's shifting it up one. This is affecting the period, this is the B value. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to combine these together into some more difficult problems, graphing sine and cosine. So let me just erase this real quickly and let's take a look at some more challenging problems. Okay, we're going to try to do one that involves all, all of them together, okay? We'll do one for sine, we'll do one for cosine, so you can see how this works. Okay, so say for example, we want to graph y equals 3 sine 1 half x minus pi, let's do x plus pi, minus 1. Okay, now every teacher is a little bit different, and your teacher might be different in this regard, but you'll get the sense of what you can do based on what I'm about to show you. We're going to do this in steps. We're going to graph the amplitude and the period in one step, that's the parent function, and then we're going to do the translation, the shifting left and right and up and down in the second step. So let me see if I can show you what I mean by that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the parent function. Sine graph starts at zero, goes up to the maximum, back down to the zero, back to the minimum, back to zero. Okay, the amplitude is three, so one, two, three, that's the max. One, two, negative three, that's the min. And now we're gonna use our formula, period equals two pi divided by b. So that gives us a period of four pi. So it's completing one cycle in four pi. So this is four pi here. I'm gonna take four pi, I'm gonna divide it into four pieces. One, two, three, four. So that we're, our scale is pi now. Pi, two pi, three pi, and four pi. This is our basic graph, that's A and B. Now we're gonna shift the graph left pi. Remember, this one has the opposite effect, so left pi, and down one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of these points, and I'm gonna shift left pi. So that's gonna, everyone's gonna go left pi, and down one. Left pi, down one, left pi, down one, left pi, um, let's see, this one over here, left pi down one, and left pi down one. So if I connect these together here, smooth curve, there's our graph. And sometimes what you can do is you can draw this dotted line here, like that, and even like this. You can think of this as your new starting point. Instead of graphing from the origin here, this shifted left pi and down one, you can think of that as your new origin, and you're just graphing this graph from here. See, zero max, zero min, back to the zero. Okay, so that's one example with sine. Let's do another one with cosine and uh, see if you can get the pattern of how this works. Do it in steps. I think that's what makes it easiest. Let's graph uh, this one here. Y equals negative two cosine, uh, let's say four X minus uh, pi plus three. Okay, this is a good one here. It's a little bit of everything here. So let's start by graphing two cosine four x. Now what I wanna show you here, in this parentheses, ideally what you want is just one x. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out that four. Let's do that right now. That's gonna be four. If we divide this by four and this by four, we get x minus pi over four. You can check your work by distributing four back in you'll get back this quantity here. So let's just copy that down. Negative plus three. Okay, so we just rewrote it. Okay, so if we graph our cosine graph, normally what our cosine graph looks like is it starts at the max, goes to the min, back to the max like that. The amplitude's two, one, two, one, negative two, and the period is gonna be two pi divided by four. So period equals two pi divided by four. So that's gonna be uh, pi over two. So it's completing one cycle here in pi over two. If you divide it up into four pieces, okay, 
the scale is going to be pi over 8. So 1 pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. Okay. But what are we going to do with this negative over here? What does the negative do? It makes all the y values the opposite. So it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So what our graph looks like now is like this. See, it reflected it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to shift everything right pi over 4, because remember this is minus, it actually has the opposite effect, so right pi over 4, up 3. So every one of these points is going to shift right pi over 4, which on our scale is actually going to be 2 pi over 8, so it's 2 steps to the right, and up 3. So let's do that. So this is going to go right 2, 1, 2, up 3, 1, 2, 3, okay. This point here is going to go right 2, up 3. That's one, two, three, right about here, okay? This one over here is gonna go uh, right two, one, two, up three, which is gonna be, let's see, right about, let's see, this was right two, up three, right over here. And um, let's see, make sure I got this right here. So we've got yeah, right two, up three, uh, right two, up three, um, this one right two, up three. Okay, so the graph is looking like this now, it's like, Okay, so it's this blue graph that's been shifted up three and right two steps. And so you can see that's the new graph. So what I recommend, I ran out of a little space here as you can see, but uh, you wanna do the A and the B together and then you can do the shift second, okay? So that's the idea for graphing sines and cosines. We'll talk about graphing tangents, cotangents, secants and cosecants in uh, one of the next videos.